So I finally broke down and purchased this guy right here. And let me tell you, it has changed my desktop setup. I know I just showed you my desktop setup and everything involved with that, including the Mix Pre 3. And a lot of you guys were wondering like, what happened to the Universal Audio Kit? Well, it's back now. And I owe that partially to the OWC Thunderbolt Hub. Stick around, I'll explain. So this is the $179 OWC Thunderbolt Hub. And there are other hubs available like this, but basically the premise is you can use it to turn a single Thunderbolt port into three Thunderbolt ports. Now, obviously the amount of bandwidth available doesn't change, but it gives you access to more physical Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is great because oftentimes the Thunderbolt devices that we're using don't come close to really saturating the Thunderbolt bandwidth. And that's mostly going to be the case with my situation. So here is the OWC Thunderbolt hub. You can see it next to my iPhone 13 mini. So it's super small and compact. On the top, you get a nice shiny surface that is a fingerprint magnet, of course, and dust magnet. But here is the uplink port for the Thunderbolt connectivity to your computer. And you get an extra USB type A port, 10 gigabits per second. All right, so let's talk about the real star of the show here, and this is it. So before we get to the Thunderbolt ports though, you have the DC input. So of course, this is not bus powered. You will need an external power supply. You get the Kingsington lock, and here are the three Thunderbolt ports. And the little holes above are for cable stabilizers, which are sold separately. On the bottom, you get four little feet to keep it stable on the desk. And OWC includes a Thunderbolt cable inside the box which is always a nice thing, and the power adapter, of course. So you just plug in the barrel style connector into the dock itself, and you'll notice it illuminates the logo on top, which would normally be super annoying, but OWC has actually made it possible to uh, toggle this illumination off using this little input right there at the top. So you just click in there like that, and you can adjust either to a lesser brightness or turn it off altogether, which is nice. I wish more companies would have that feature, but the only downside is that when you power it off and you plug it back in, yeah, it turns back on. So here's a behind the scenes look at my desktop setup. And I know the cable management could be a little better, but it's actually fairly tidy. Uh, some of the wires have to sort of uh, have some slack in them, especially for the display with the monitor arm because I can adjust it up and down, left and right, etc. But when the desk is placed in the proper position, you really don't see any of these cables. They're well hidden. Uh, but of course, I can always still work on that. So you can see the OWC hub mounted on the back part of my desk. And right now I have it connected to my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So here it is affixed to my desk and hidden away thanks to a piece of Velcro, which is super handy, right? So here I have the uplink cable that comes from the MacBook Pro, and I also have three additional Thunderbolt 3 ports. So basically one port to three ports. So I have my external SSD, I have the Universal Audio Apollo, and then I have the Pro Display XDR. All three of those devices connected via a single cable thanks to this hub. So here's the SSD mounted to the back of the desk as well. Nice and hidden away. Here's the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. And here is the Pro Display XDR. So all three of those devices connected through the hub going to my MacBook Pro. And on the Pro Display XDR itself, I'm using the USB ports to connect additional devices. So when connected to a host, the light on the hub turns blue. You can still go in and disable that though. I really appreciate the gesture, but I do wish there was just a toggle switch. It would make it a lot simpler. So here's the Apollo Twin X again. I'm so happy to be using a universal audio interface. I just love these devices. Here's my webcam again, connected to the Pro Display XDR. Uh, and here is the CF Express reader, again, magnetized. I showed you that in our back to the Mac video. So the cool thing is that I can easily connect to the Mac mini, which definitely benefits from this hub because there are only two physical Thunderbolt ports on this device. And my Mac mini is my main machine for my desktop. So that's really the inspiration behind this whole thing because previously I didn't have enough Thunderbolt three ports that's the reason why I was using the Mix Pre 3 instead of this guy right here. Now, I recently did a hands-on with the Keychron Q2, and the cool thing about it is it includes a programmable control knob. 
And look what I did. I programmed it to control the universal audio monitor output. And I just thought that was super cool. I wanted to share it. And if you click the knob, guess what happens? Yeah, it mutes it. How awesome is that? So if you haven't watched the Keychron Q2 video, be sure to do so because this keyboard has a lot of bells and whistles. That's one of my favorite. Now, back to our schedule program. You may be wondering, Jeff, do you get full resolution with the Pro Display XDR when going through the Thunderbolt hub? And the answer to that question is yes, full 6K resolution at 60 Hertz. So that's no problem at all. But what about charging? Well, that's sort of the downside, only 60 watts power uh, power delivery to the MacBook Pro. Obviously that's not gonna be a big deal when connected to the Mac mini, but just keep that in mind. Not gonna charge at full speed for some of Apple's more power hungry laptops. And the USB hub on the Pro Display XDR itself, you can see that here. So the keyboard's connected at USB 2.0 speeds, of course, and then you have the USB three speeds, which five gigabits per second for the CF Express reader and your Logi 4K Pro webcam. Now, if I switch over to Thunderbolt connectivity, you can see I have all three Thunderbolt devices listed, the Apollo Twin X, the Envoy Pro SSD, and of course the Pro Display XDR. Now, let's talk about SSD speed. So here is the Envoy Pro SSD when going through the hub and you can see the read and write speeds not shabby at all doesn't reach what the drive is fully capable of but again plenty of bandwidth here for my particular use case now here it is connected to the dock but with no other devices connected and you'll see similar performance there with write and read speeds a lot will depend on the type of device you connect and how much bandwidth it uses. At any rate, you can connect up to five Thunderbolt devices to this hub, meaning you could daisy chain additional devices. Now here is how the drive performs when directly connected to my MacBook Pro. And you'll notice, yes, indeed, the performance is better than when going through the hub. And that's totally expected. The cool thing is that each different port on this hub is its own separate branch. So when you disconnect one device, it's not going to interfere with another device as in the case with the daisy chain. And the device plays nice with bus powered SSDs as well, with each port providing up to 15 watts of power. So this thing has truly been a game changer for my desktop setup. I'm so happy to be back on the Universal Audio platform. I'm a huge fan of Universal Audio products, just that the workflow, the sound quality, it just makes me happy to be able to record on there. Uh, and I, I don't think I realized what I was missing and I don't know why I waited so long to make this happen. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Like I said, if you haven't seen our new Back to the Mac episode where I break down my desktop setup. Obviously some things have changed with this video, but if you haven't seen that, be sure to watch that here. And you can also catch our review of the Keychron Q2 as well. So I'm interested to hear what you have to say about my setup. Do you have some feedback, suggestions, questions? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'll be hanging down there all day. So I'll be sure to reply to whatever you guys have to say. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.